Welcome to Vintage Vehicle Videos. First we'll take you on a trip to the United States Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, where we will see just a tiny fraction of all the great aircraft they have on display. Hi, I'm here at the U.S. Air Force Museum at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, standing next to Terry Aiken, the senior curator. Terry, would you mind giving us a brief um, history of the museum and this beautiful atrium that we're in? Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome you to the world's largest and oldest aviation museum. Mm, thank you. Uh, today we're going to have the opportunity to look at over 300 aircraft, but most important, we're going to have an opportunity to get to better understand the people who've made the history of the United States Air Force and who's been so important to our country. The atrium here is where 1.2 million people each year come to begin their visit and uh, they're greeted by Icarus, the mythological beginnings of flight. So with the mythological beginning, why don't we start our real visit and let's go look at some airplanes. Great. Here we are at the beginning of the United States Air Force. This is the Wright Brothers Model 1909 military flyer, constructed just six short years after the very first powered flight by Orville and Wilbur Wright. In this aircraft, the first three pilots of the United States Air Force and its beginning organization learned how to fly. The pace of technology and how quickly aircraft have developed in the first century of powered flight is absolutely remarkable. But nowhere is it more obvious than here in World War I. Before, we were looking at a 1909 Wright Flyer. Again, in six short years, 1916, here we have the French SPAD-7 fighter. Sleek, powerful, extremely maneuverable, and very airworthy. The pilots of World War I truly began to define aviation as we know it today, and with the remarkable technologies of these aircraft. The United States Air Force Museum has one of the premier collections of World War I aircraft, and the SPAD-7 is only one of many that you would see here. Today, however, I'd like to share with you one of the real crown jewels of the collection. This is a true one-of-a-kind aircraft that you'll only see here at the Air Force Museum, and that's the World War I Caproni 36 bomber. This is the very first bomber used by the early Air Forces. One of the unique things, not only by virtue of its design, which is three engines. These were used in Italy by American pilots flying with the Italian Air Force to fly across the Adriatic Sea on bombing missions. As a personal note, two very interesting people were members of this squadron. The most famous is Fiorello LaGuardia, the later on the mayor of New York City and for whom LaGuardia International Airport in New York City is named. Most people assume that the airport is named for him because he was the mayor. Well, that certainly helped, but most important it was because LaGuardia was a raided pilot in World War I flying in Italy in the Caproni bomber. Okay, let's move on. As we continue on our visit through the Air Force Museum, there are many aircraft that we could have stopped at, but quite frankly, this is one of my favorites. This is the Boeing P-26, known by the people who flew it as the Pea Shooter. A very sleek, very exciting, and very powerful design. And it was the first all-metal monoplane that was adopted 
by the early Army Air Forces. It was a very maneuverable aircraft. Many of the leaders of the Army Air Forces and of the Air Force to come first learned to fly in this type of aircraft. As we progress through the Air Force Museum, this is an example of some of the new exhibitry we're introducing for our 1.2 million visitors that come. Instead of aircraft, we're putting people's stories around them. Here in this exhibit, we're featuring the American volunteers of the Eagle Squadron, American volunteers who flew in the Royal Air Force during the very dark days of the Battle of Britain. Here we're featuring the Mark V Spitfire, but with real human beings. And as you might be able to tell, we have also the sound of the times. We're listening to Radio BBC in the background giving the news for a very specific day in 1941. We tell stories here of people, and there's no better way to do it than introducing sound into our exhibits. Certainly one of the most dramatic features of the exhibit is the telephone ringing announcing a scramble. German bombers are inbound. And here we have the aircraft scrambling to meet them. Introducing into the exhibit and into the storyline the sound of aircraft. And here we'll have the starting of the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine as part of the Spitfire. During this particular part of the exhibit, we have over six aircraft starting, taxiing to the end of the field, and taking off into combat. This is the type of new exhibitry that you can expect to see at the Air Force Museum. Here in the World War II gallery, the United States Air Force Museum has the opportunity to showcase 
many, many famous aircraft. Behind me is the P-39 Era Cobra, the B-25 Mitchell, the early Razorback P-47 Thunderbolt, and the very famous North American P-51 Mustang. In addition to the American aircraft that we feature, we also have in the collection some of America's Air Force's adversarial foes in the air. Representing here the Messerschmitt 109G, a late model Messerschmitt that was very appropriate in 1944 and 1945 defending the Reich against the onslaught of American bombers. Representing those many thousands of U.S. bombers that were flying over Germany facing the Messerschmitt interceptors of the German Luftwaffe, here we have the B-17G. In our collection, it's Shushu Baby, a true combat veteran of the European campaign, uh, was saved from destruction many years ago by the Air Force Museum, brought here and restored to represent the many, many thousands of members of the 8th United States Air Force and other Air Forces too that use the B-17. We're very proud to have this in our collection. Certainly one of the most historic aircraft in the collection of the United States Air Force Museum is Boxcar. This is the B-29 that dropped the atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Nagasaki and ended World War II. Here in the Korean War area of the Air Force Museum, one of the highlights is the F-86A Sabre Jet from the Korean War. With this aircraft, the American fighter pilots established an aerial supremacy over MiG Alley. And speaking of MiG Alley, right next to the F-86 is the MiG-15, its adversary during the Korean War. This particular MiG-15 did in fact fly combat missions during the war and then was flown to freedom by a North Korean pilot soon after the war. These aircraft epitomized much of aviation in the early 50s, but one of the true icons of this era is the magnificent B-36 bomber that we see all around in the background. When we began our visit here at the Air Force Museum, we started with the Wright Brothers Model 1909 Military Flyer. That's the opening chapter to the history of the United States Air Force. Here at the museum, we can't tell you what the final chapter is, but we can tell you what the latest chapter is. And the latest chapter is here with the new F-22 fighter. It's really exciting 
to be able to showcase our past, our current, and the future of the United States Air Force with aircraft such as this that you can see when you come visit us. During your visit to the Air Force Museum, you have the opportunity to see so many aircraft that are beautiful and graceful in their design. Sadly, this aircraft is not one of them. This is tacit blue. It might not be an attractive aircraft, but it was an extremely important test aircraft for the United States in the late part of the 20th century. This was one of the first of the stealth aircraft. This aircraft began to prove and validate very important stealth technology that has since become very common in other aircraft of the American fighting inventory. Tacit Blue was not a pretty aircraft, but it was a very important one and holds a very important place here at the Air Force Museum. I'm standing next to a Sidewinder missile and a U.S. Mark 117 bomb, 750 pounds of high explosive. This lethal weaponry is all part of this featured aircraft, which is the F-4C Phantom. This particular aircraft was flown at that time by Colonel Robin Olds, who had four confirmed MiG victories during the Vietnam War and truly was one of the air war in Southeast Asia's finest combat leaders. This is an aircraft we can be proud of. But then again, here at the Air Force Museum, we're proud of all of our aircraft, each one of them having a great story involving great people.